I'm going to give you a brief overview of what Premiere Pro is all about. And I've created this demonstration project. You won't find it inside your working files folder. I just created it just for this one tutorial. So what is Premiere Pro? Well, the answer obviously is that it's video editing software, but let's just talk about some of its features that make it stand out from the crowd. First and foremost, it works with tons of camcorder formats natively. That means those camcorder file formats are brought into Premiere Pro and they're not changed. Virtually all other video editing software products change those files into a file type that those products can then work with. Premiere Pro does not do that. It takes those files and you work with them natively, unchanged in their pristine format. That's a very powerful and important feature of Premiere Pro. Let me just give you an idea of the different kind of formats that are available. If I just go to File, New Sequence, this shows all these different kinds of camcorder formats. And some might be familiar to you, some might be Greek to you. I just quickly run down a few of them, like AVCHD, which is a very popular prosumer format. And you look at the digital SLR, single lens reflex camcorders that are popular now for shooting video. Look on down here, DVC Pro and XD Cam, these are professional formats. The RED camera is a very high resolution format. So all these different kinds of camcorder formats run natively inside Premiere Pro. That's a really important feature of Premiere Pro. Also, it works with tons, I mean, tons of different file format types. If I just open up the import dialog box and hover my cursor over this, you can't even see all the different file types. They run off the side of the screen. They get the D and then they cut down to M when I get back there again in a second. See that? Just all sorts of file types. And these are all audio, video, graphics, image file types that work inside Premiere Pro. It's really a full feature program that can work with virtually anything you throw at it. That's a really important feature. Once you bring those files into Premiere Pro, essentially creating links to those files here inside the project panel, and you can put those files onto a sequence, as it's called here inside Premiere Pro, inside the timeline panel. So here's a sequence of clips inside this sequence. And once you bring a sequence of clips in, then you can edit them using trim tools. So here's a trim tool. I can just change that and trim it down and take some of the tail frames off, which leaves this gap, which is probably not what you want to do, but that's okay. You can edit that way. I'll undo that by pressing Control or Command Z. Instead of using a trim tool like that, I'll use a different tool called a ripple edit tool by holding down a keyboard modifier and clicking. It turns into a different kind of a tool that does not make a gap, just actually kind of slides things over to fill the gap. Hold down again and drag that one there. Now that I've trimmed these guys, I can put a transition between the two of them. I'm just go show you that there are transitions here inside the effects panel. There's the effects tab, the effects panel, and you got audio effects. Audio transitions, video effects, video transitions. Let's just focus on video transitions. Over here, we'll scroll on down to look at a wipe transition, for example. We'll just add a transition between these clips. We'll put a wedge wipe there. Once you add a transition, let's show you how it plays there. There you go. So a little transition go by. You're not stuck with just that appearance, just that one way of working with things. You can customize transitions. Let me just click on this to open up that transition inside the effect controls panel. There it is. And you can customize the heck out of it. Instead of, let's say, transitioning from the top to the bottom like that, let's say we want to go from the lower right hand corner instead. You can transition that way. So there are options that you can apply to virtually all transitions. This particular one lets you have a border. So I'll make the border really obvious here so you can see it. There's the border. If I want to change the color, I can even pick a color from the scene, make the border the color from some color here in the scene. Here you go. So those are some of the cool features in terms of transitions. Let's move on to effects. You apply effects directly to a clip rather than between clips. We scroll up here and close down the transitions, go to video effects, and we'll just say add a blur. We can add a blur to a clip. So I'll go down here to a Gaussian blur, which is kind of a standard blur effect. I add it, doesn't blur. What's going on? That's because it's in neutral. It's kind of waiting for us to tell it how blurry we want to make things. We can make it, let's say, that blurry. And there you go, we've now blurred it. But the thing that's great about the effects inside Premiere Pro is that they're animatable, they're keyframable. You can make them change over time. It's a hugely powerful feature inside Premiere Pro. So I'm going to go to the beginning of this clip. I'm going to say, okay, let's start blurry. So I'll put on a keyframe for blurriness. We'll go in a couple of seconds, right about there. And we'll make it unblurry. We'll sharpen it right up so you can see how that can change over time. Here we go. Gets blurry and then sharpens up. On top of applying an effect like blur, you can also do some color correction. There are tons of different effects, but I'll just show you a color correction here just as an example. We'll pick the sort of color correction go-to tool for doing things quickly called the Fast Color Corrector. I'll just add that. 
and you can see that it has this great color wheel. So for example, if we want to, you know, warm this up a little bit, make it kind of later in the day, right? Make it a little bit like that, like it might even be sort of a sunset. We can add to the sunset feel, let's say, by increasing this sort of level of contrast here and darkening things up just a little bit like that. There you go. So you can do all those kinds of things with effects that are applied directly to clips. Well, you're working here with just a set of clips on one track, but we can work with clips on multiple tracks. Let's add some audio to this thing. So I'll scroll over here. We've got a little audio file, just some music here. So I'll add some music. Go to the beginning of this whole thing so you get it right at the beginning. There we go. If I just play this now, it's going to sound maybe not that pleasant. Here we go. The waterfall obviously is overpowering the music, but what's great about Premiere is that you can control the audio to the finest detail. I could reduce the audio of just the waterfall just in that clip by clicking on it and going over here and changing the volume here on a volume level for the whole clip or on a channel basis. If this were a 5.1 channel, we'd have six different channels we could change here, but this is stereo, so we've got left and right, so we can adjust the audio on an individual channel basis or overall. Or I can change the audio for the whole darn track, all these clips here if I want to do that so that the music is properly balanced by going to this audio mixer. Another great feature inside Premiere Pro is this mixer. Scroll down a bit, see audio one there. Let me play this for you. I'll adjust the mix here as we go along. And as I adjust that, I can make that key frameable as well. I can animate the audio changes so that we can, let's say, have the waterfall be loud for a moment and then bring it down while we bring up the music, things like that. So you can animate, you can change the audio levels as well as video effects over time. Well, not only can you add, let's say, multiple tracks of audio, you can add multiple tracks of video as well. You just track down another clip here by just opening up this little import dialog box and we'll go get this time-lapse video clip here. And I'm going to add it to the project. So I want to put it right, say, over here at the end. If I look at the end, there's the Matterhorn there. I'm going to take this other shot of the Matterhorn and put it on top of it. When I do that, it, it covers it up. So we don't want to cover it up. We want those two guys to be visible together. One way to do that is to do what's called a picture-in-a-picture -picture effect. So I just grab this guy, click on it, and I can change its size quite easily. Put it over like that and have those two guys play together. There you go. And if I want to add, let's say, a graphic here, I can add a title. Premiere Pro has this very powerful titler tool. I'll open it up by opening up an existing title here by double-clicking it. There's this title that I created inside the titler using a template. You can see that you can have gradients there, strokes or borders around it, different fonts. You can have drop shadows, all different kinds of effects, as well as making shapes here using shape tools. All sorts of things you can do inside the titler. It's a very powerful tool. If this were a standalone tool, it would probably be worth several hundred dollars, but this comes with Premiere Pro as part of the whole Premiere Pro package. You can see it like that as a, over transparency, or you can actually see it over a clip so you can get a sense of how it looks. I'll bring that guy into the project by just taking that toddler and dragging it on top of this thing we made here. I'll extend its length so it's the full length of those two clips. And it'll just pop on the screen like that. And you may not want to pop it on the screen. You can, again, use the transitions to make that go a little more smoothly. Not only can you put transitions between clips, you can put transitions at the beginning or at end of a clip. Let me scroll up here and go back to transitions here. Video transitions dissolve. Well, that'll dissolve to the beginning of the lower third. And we'll add a dissolve to the beginning of the time lapse as well. Let's see how that looks now. There we go. Kind of came on sort of fast, but we can expand the view a little bit and open up their particular panel over here, and we can say, let's make them a little bit longer. Drag them out like that, makes them longer. Or I can click on the second one and do the same thing there as well. We can extend the length of that one as well. So now it's a little more gradual. There we go. Have them gradually come on like that. We can also have them fade away at the end if we want. So now that we've done all this work, we've added some titles, we've layered clips, we've added some music, and mixed it all nicely. Now what you want to do is share your project so people can actually view it. People can't view your project unless you export it to a certain file type. Right now, that's just a Premiere Pro project that is visible or viewable only inside Premiere Pro. So once you've done all this work to create this project, you now need to export it to some kind of file type. And if you go to File Export, you'll see all the various formats that are available. Again, it's an insane number of formats. You look at this little list here. These are the various file formats here. Let's just pick QuickTime, for example. 
Then under QuickTime, you can pick some presets. So we'll just go, let's say, NTSC DV. Do we want DV, really, or do we want something that's like HD, which is what we started with here? So let's go down here to the codec, and we'll pick a codec like DVC Pro HD P30, and that is really an HD codec inside this NTSC as we picked out up here, but now that we changed it, now it turns into custom. And that would be a very large file that's certainly broadcast quality, or we can do something, let's say, that would run on a smartphone. Instead of QuickTime, we go to H.264 and look at its presets. We've got Android, tablets, 3G, PP, we got the iPhone, iPads, you name it, all these different presets, YouTube, Vimeo, whatever you want. You can just pick a preset here and create files that'll work on all those different kinds of applications or on all those different kinds of hardware. So that's Premiere Pro in a nutshell. It has just a huge number of features that will help you make excellent looking videos.